हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर अजीत जायसवाल फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी पाण्डिचेरी सेंट्रल यूनिवर्सिटी पुडुचेरी टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट ए मॉड्यूल कॉल्ड एज रिकन्स्ट्रक्शन ऑफ एंशियंट ह्यूमन बिहेवियर एंड सोशल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन अंडर पेपर फिजिकल एंड बायोलॉजिकल एंथ्रोपोलॉजी डियर लेट सी वॉट वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न फ्रॉम दिस मॉड्यूल first we will try to understand the origin and human behavior try to understand the origin of social organization and we also try to delineate the different approach to study ancient human behavior and socialization as we all know that the legacy of our human evolutionary past has been one of the unparalleled evolutionary success due to the remarkable behavioral adaptability born out of our expanded brains our expanded brains the legacy we leave for the future will depend on how well we choose to adapt to the environment we have brought upon this planet the ability to adapt to change particularly to environmental condition as a key factor in modern human evolution adaptability and innovation in response to climatic change can be seen occurring as far back as 400000 year ago revolutionary changes in behavior also occurred roughly 2.5 million year ago and again at 1.8 million year ago increased brain size was not a gradual process greater intelligence was naturally selected for and occurred quickly it is not a continuous process like other animal primates spend their life in solving the very basic problem of finding food avoiding enemy or predator finding mates and rearing their offspring as anatomical feature evolved in response to selective pressure imposed by the environment similarly behavior also evolved to meet this demand scientists who study behavior in free ranging primate do so within 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 an ecological framework focusing on the relationship between aspect of social behavior and the natural environment which is a, which is which act as an important approach called socio biology or socio ecology therefore to understand the function of one component such as social structure of a given species it is necessary for all of us to determine its relationship with numerous environmental factors including diet that what is the quality of diet how much they are taking what kind of food they are taking distribution of food and water resources how it is distributed what about their source of water what about the quality of water what about the the, the their their nature body size distribution and types of predator whether the predators are all together present over there or they are coming belongs to some other species distribution of sleeping sites or it is called as resting sites home sites precautionary site safety sites and also activity pattern whether they are nocturnal or diurnal and also it also include the relationship with other species both relationship with primate and also with relationship with non primate it also include the impact of human activities interpretation of origin of human behavior from fossil evidence evidences behavior can sometime be established from examination of the fossil themselves for example cut mark on the bodo skull as reflected in the next slide may indicate cannibalism or ritual behavior postcranial 
are a possible source of information regarding postural and locomotory habit and activity level through post cranial remains from african middle pleistocene and earlier late pleistocene fossil post crania exhibit both primitive and derived traits the post cranial remains from middle and late pleistocene this post crania exhibit both primitive and derived traits the gracilizations of the upper limb which marked the advent of anatomical modernity is a is a reversal of the previous trend towards robust city and may suggest a relaxation of selection for constant mobility and close encounters with prey because fossil and archaeological record provide limited data concerning behavior and social organization researcher turn their attention to other sources of information to help reconstruct our past modern hunter gatherers for example serve as analogs for reconstructing how our ancestors adapted to their environment and how they may have made and used tools non human primates are our closest phylogenetic relatives and are studied to generate information about ecological and behavioral adaptations a comparative discussion of human and non human social behavior seem particularly vulnerable to culturally loaded generalizations with the assumption that they are true of all people despite this constant a comparative approach yields useful information and is a main reason why we can deduce a fair amount of information about the social organization and behavior of long extinct human from their cultural and skeletal remains from the view point of reconstructing human evolution studies of the chimpanzee have generalized many suggestion concerning our ancestral behavior and social organizations as it gave us ample amount of generalized information regarding the behavior of the primates and their social organization of special interest are the fact of chimpanzee intelligence communication socio ability and adaptability duration of mother infant tie and sibling relationship bipedalism extent of other manipulation and tool use heavy reliance on plant food and some predation and the important role that social tradition and the environmental context have on social organization and behavior as discussed by tanner in 1981 one of the best known researcher on chimpanzee is jane goodell whose study began in 1960 in the gombe stream reserve tanzania it has added significantly to our knowledge about chimpanzee and has provided insight for the earliest stage of human evolution jan goodill did a very extensive and longest research on chimpanzee and this her study was altogether known to be the largest longest field work in the history of anthropological research especially on chimpanzee concern goodell however has documented a number of instances of chimpanzee tool use and manufacture goodell in 1964 saw chimpanzee break of grass stem 
are thin branches which they poke into termites holes to get at the termites if the probe does not fit the hole the chimpanzee shapes it until it does leaves are stripped away to make the tool suitable for termite fishing after termite becomes attached to the probe the chimpanzee runs the probe across its front teeth and eats the termite thus a tool use is also made communication is universal among animal and includes unintentional autonomic response and behavior that convey meaning such attributes as body posture convey information about an animal's emotional state many intentional behavior also serve as communication in primates these include a wide variety of gesture facial expression and vocalization some of which we have share primates also use a wide array of vocalization for communication some such as the bark of the baboons or the food grunt of a chimpanzee are made of made to inform other primates also communicate through display which are more complicated frequently elaborate combination of behavior over time certain behavior and motor patterns that originated in a specific context have assumed increasing importance as communicatory signal for example crouching initially aided in avoiding physical attack in addition this behavior conveyed that the individual was fearful submissive and non aggressive thus crouching became valuable not only for its primary function but for its role in communication as well and natural selection increasingly favored it for this secondary role tracing human behavior from archaeological remains archaeological remains are a good source of evidence for past behavior and may help to clarify the nature of late middle pleistocene speciation events themselves the most conspicuous behavior behavioral event in the late middle pleistocene archaeological record of africa is the disappearance of isulian industry before 200 and its replacement by diverse middle stone age tradition this obvious fact fact is consequently overlooked because europe's earliest modern human inhabitants about 150000 years later were makers of upper paleolithic technology thus the origin of homo sapiens has been conflated with the origin of the upper paleolithic the neolithic or new stone age beginning before 10000 year ago in some areas of the world marks the most pivotal changes in human history the shift from food gathering to food production like the change from the paleolithic to mesolithic in mesolithic the transition to the neolithic or new stone age occurred gradually neolithic now refer to the first cultural period in a given region in which the first sign of domestication are present the neolithic economy based on food production produced substantial changes in human lifestyle the pace of social and cultural change 
increased enormously. Human population was thus modifying the reproductive pattern of certain plants and animals to propagate certain characteristics better suited to their own need. Gradually, this process yielded plant and animal that were distinct from wild species and dependent on human. The process that is referred to as domestication. In addition to a dramatic increase in population, the Neolithic period is also marked by increasingly sophisticated material culture, social stratification and political complexities. This trend set the stage for the emergence of state in which many part of the world. So dear student, now let us try to find out the origin of language or symbols or human revolution we can say that. In much of the recent literature, the human revolution is synonymous with the origin of fully syntactical language. Abstract and symbolic behavior implies language, but it is doubtful that the point at which they can first be detected coincide with the birth of language. There is a great confusion related to that. Attempt to identify the earliest sign of language, whether from the study of the brain, the speech apparatus, stone tool or primate communication contribute to a sense of continuity rather than discontinuity between human and non-human primates cognitive. Cognitive and communicative abilities, language does not fossilize, it is not at all a heart like a bone and Technology provides insight only into the minimum cognitive ability to its makers and users. So therefore, it is very difficult to find out or explain based on the language concerns or you will get any evidence from the language concern because it is not something which is preserved like the fossil. We have to analyze the evolutionary concept only through the behavioral as well as cultural changes that we have seen in due course of evolution from human to non-human to human, especially in the brain. Behavior and human origins. There are several physical characteristics such as, such as adaptation for bipedal locomotion and enlarged brain that characterize human and to varying degree our hominid ancestor. But from a structural point of view, humans are not really that unique when compared with other primates, especially the great apes. Several features differentiate human from the majority of other primates. These traits may be found in one or more other primate species, but only human can claim them all. That is, human are bipedal, first point. Second, human live in a permanent bisexual social group with male often bonded to female. Next point, humans have large brain relative to body weight and they are capable of complex learning. Next point, human can think symbolically and they use language a communication system that is symbolic in nature. Next, human have adopted culture. Next, human obtain food through some male female division of labor. Next, human, human female experience concealed evolution so that they are sexually receptive throughout the year. Next, these traits are characteristics of all modern human. Next point is that human reflect their evolutionary heritage as primates and stand as one component of a biological continuum. It is this evolutionary relationship then that accumulate that account for many of the behavior we have in common with prosimian monkey and apes. The literal the literature conveyed upon a number of common ingredients 
thought to characterize modern human behavior like increasing artifact diversity, standardization of artifact types, blade technology, worked bone and other organic materials, personal ornaments and art or images, structured living spaces, ritual, economic intensification reflected in the exploitation of aquatic or other resources that require specialized technology, enlarged geographic range and expanded exchange networks. Now let's discuss about the technology. New lithic technology are, or, or we can also call it as a new stone technologies because the lithic means stone age or stone culture. The new lithic technologies mainly blade, micro blade, backing etc. Standardi standardization within the formal tool categories, hefting and composite tools, tool in novel material example bone and antlers, they are having a special purpose tool, example projectiles and geometrics, increased number of tool categories, geographic variation in formal categories and we have seen a temporal variation in the formal categories. There is a greater control of fire, so the technology can be seen even in the development of tools. By, by fabrication of tools, giving special to, to the tools, developing a compound tools, making it special. So in the technological part, we have seen on one side, the weight or density or the, the, the sharpness or its usability or its efficiency is keep on changing like the weight has weight of the tool has keep on decreasing from in the evolutionary context. We have seen the sharpness of the, the bone tools, especially stone tools has been decreased. We have seen the changes, the, the, the different parts of the skeleton were utilized for, for the development of specific tools, for the development of specific complex tools. All this example give us a clear cut explanation regarding the technological improvement, technological advancement and indirectly the encephalization process or enlargement of the brain. Economic and social organization, long distance procurement and exchange of raw material, curation of exotic raw material, specialized hunting of large dangerous animal, scheduling and seasonality in resource exploitation site reoccupation, intensification of resource extraction, especially aquatic and vegetable resources, long distance exchange network, group and individual self identification through artifact style and structured use of domestic space, symbolic behavior. Regional artifact style, self adornment that is beads and ornament, use of pigment, notched and incised object that is bone, excel, ochre, stone, image and representation, burial with grave goods, ochre and ritual object. It can be argued that modern human behavior is characterized by first abstract thinking, second planning depth, third behavior economic and technological innovativeness, fourth symbolic behavior and fifth ecological aspect, sixth technological. Let's discuss about the abstract thinking. The abstract thinking, the ability to act with reference to abstract concept not limited in time or space. Planning depth. The ability to formulate strategies based on past experience and to act upon them in a group context. 
Next is behavioral, economic, and technological innovation. Fourth one is a symbolic behavior. In symbolic behavior, the ability to represent object, people, and abstract concept with arbitrary symbol, vocal or visual, and tend to understand and imply such symbols in cultural practices. Tangible traces of these early behavioral shift towards modernity can be seen in the African archaeological record can be tied explicitly to hominid cognitive and cultural capabilities. Fifth and is ecological aspect of record reflect human ability to colonize new environments which require both innovation and planning depth. Next one is a technological feature which reveal human inventiveness and capacity for logical thinking. Foraging societies. Because event in the prehistoric past cannot be directly observed, the anthropologist can reconstruct them only from material evidence recovered in modern times. Such reconstruction is based on analogy whereby the identity of unknown form is inferred from those already known called as ethnoarchaeology. Ethnoarchaeology utilizes living population for reconstructing our past. For, for example, we can gain insight from population of modern forgeries about a way of life that was a basic part of our evolutionary past. Increased geographic range. Expansion of human population into challenging habitats by means of improved technology is seen as a sign of cognitive sophistication and social complexity. Our understanding of the significance of most of these is tempered by three factors. First, good data for the interior of the Sahara is lacking. Second, the ready visibility of Acheulean bifaces tend to inflate the number of Acheulean sites relative to those of other period and third one is that the environmental condition. In this region at the time of occupation are unknown. The few known dates suggest that this occupations date to the late middle Pleistocene. Associated lake and Spring deposit indicate a more wet habitat than at present. The conclusive information about behavior is that behavior is a highly complex trait and must be seen not only as being influenced by a specific gene product but also as the product of interactions between genetic and environmental factors that are not yet fully elucidated. Indeed, the ability to learn is ultimately based in the genome inherited by individual of any species. Between species, there is a considerable variation in the limits and potential for learning and behavioral plasticity that is capacity to change in the physiological context. Now let's try to revise the important emerging points as we have seen that primate behavior is like human behavior. As the primate behavior we have seen lot of relations more or less seems to be similar in nature. 
so we can say that climate behavior is like human behavior and is highly social in nature as to some extent it is what most interesting and also what makes non human primates so like us however behavior also include locomotion and specific of foraging behavior socio biological principle give us a tool to objectively investigate these things but we should not be blindly by the perfection of the method concern primates are very social creature they express themselves in a social situation though a variety of behavior including like grooming which shows a bonding behavior between the child and mother then primate social group reflect the complexity of their social relationship there is a division of labor there is a head of the family there is a there is a female group there is a ch child get, caring group so group structure can range from one male with several female to group of many many males and female to solitary individual primate shows both competitive and cooperative behavior on one side in order to acquire the food acquire the mates in acquire the home range they have a competitive behavior on the other side they have a cooperative behavior like division of labor providing protection providing food providing homeland to their family member all of which can be studied within an evolutionary context primate researchers have long been collecting evidence that non human primates have culture particularly material culture or the ability to make simple object to alter their environment at last let's try to sum up in the end we can say that most behavioral studies just give us a clue to the big picture and the picture itself need to be pieced together like a jigsaw so that and like most of these things it is open to interpretation too thank you